Hello boys and girls. So there's several ways in which I can pitch today's video. One relates to the curve that you see here on this Wikipedia page uh, on the screen right now. As part of this video, we are going to uh, go through some code that when I run it, uh, draws this, uh, in my opinion, very nice looking picture. You see some regular curves here and then some fractal ones. In particular, the green one is uh, what you just saw um, on the Wikipedia page. Um, but this is not just about, you know, looking at some uh, fractal shapes. This, um, uh, these curves are also really relevant for, um, like in the last video, talking about neural networks. In particular, in this video, I'm going to uh, construct analytically how you get to um, basically all analytical functions in a unit interval um, just using ReLO activations. So the ReLO are these uh, ramps, the nonlinear uh, activations. I think I have the Wikipedia page here as well. So does it have a picture? Yeah. So this, uh, the, the dark blue line here, so this is just this very simple ramp. We are literally going to um, take this implementation, just a maximum of x and zero. And um, uh, interestingly, with this, you can, if you compose them uh, with enough uh, um, linear uh, components and uh, use a lot of these ReLO uh, activations, then you get all polynomials. And um, we will see that, you know, to get the polynomials, you really just need uh, the monomials, you know, x to the power of n. And to get to the x to the power of n, you really just need to get from ReLOS to squaring. You need to get from these extremely simple looking functions um, to x squared. And the construction that gives you the fractal curves are incidentally um, very related to the curve here in, in black that gives you just uh, squared. So this is uh, basically uh, a quadratic function inverted and we are going to see how we can get this quadratic function by just plugging together ReLO networks. Um, I'm, uh, I'm looking at this because I'm scripting the, the video for the universal approximation theorem. Um, the um, algorithm here that we are going to discuss, there's not even learning involved, we're just uh, like uh, are obtaining analytically the, the direct way to get all these monomials. Um, and so this is already a component of the whole theory of approximation. Of course, um, there's more to universal approximation than just the fact that you can approximate all functions. There's also like all the um, uh, estimates of how big your network needs to be to um, get all this, um, what uh, spaces can be obtained like function spaces can be uh, obtained with um, what sorts of net uh, networks and in, in, in what kind of way. And all this stuff, approximation theory stuff, will be part of the future videos. But as I was writing the script, um, this really fairly simple part got bigger and bigger. And so I thought I'm, you know, factoring it out to uh, a video on its own. Um, if you want to see more on what we are going to discuss in this video, I found this nice short book. This is just 140 pages uh, from 2022. It's a little bit dark here. Um, okay, I don't know if you can read this, but I will link it below. It's called uh, Neural Networks and Numerical Analysis. Um, you, you will see this video, what we are going to do here is similar to what one also does in, um, in uh, Finite Element mathematics so it will have a little bit of this flavor and this is also discussed uh, in in that book for example okay so uh, let's jump into it um, apart from uh, rectify units apart from this book that I just uh, promoted to you um, apart from this curve that oh, sorry <laughs> 
uh, also apart from this uh, the book apart from the uh, rectifier uh, apart from this curve there's two more things that are relevant on the one hand um, I mean, we will derive it basically, you know, the little of it that we no, uh, need. But one buzzword that is relevant is the polarization identities. So just the statements that you can get in a product or in our case, multiplication of two numbers uh, by squaring. This will be uh, one of the tricks to get from um, squaring uh, and addition and subtraction to, to multiplication and thus uh, monomials and thus polynomials and thus analytical functions. Um, uh, but uh, as you can see here, this, the construction of this, uh, this curve has to do with um, this, uh, in this representation, um, it's uh, an infinite sum over certain, uh, over certain sequence of uh, functions, s and then 2n, uh, apply to x and this whole thing abstracts uh, to Neumann series which are basically geometric series but just with an operator or a function okay so um, the things we are, we are going to implement the sort of sc scalar version of this idea um, and beyond what we are going to discuss in this video um, these concepts are now also necessary to obtain other um, like explicit constructions of neural networks for um, certain functions. Uh, we are just looking at the simplest case. We are just going to need the um, map x to x squared. And then it's clear that you can get all um, uh, polynomials as well. But um, then uh, like smarter constructions of networks than just taking this uh, uh, small ingredients and plugging them together uh, in an ad hoc fashion can be obtained and then there's a bunch of uh, theory and this is a, a relevant keyword that's why I'm pointing it, it out. Um, okay, so um, I'm not going to, like I'm going to explain the math with the relos uh, in this video, um, but I'm not going to, uh, to uh, like give you any code for the neural network itself. I mean, you can try to reverse engineer and implement it. It's not hard uh, once we got there, but um, maybe I do some PyTorch in the next uh, video. And then there is also some linear algebra um, where you can uh, sell uh, all the concepts that we are going to learn in this video um, f for the sake of uh, a practical neural network implementation. Um, okay, and to start the video, uh, I will show you, uh, like, a, uh, I will give uh, like a three min minute rant on how uh, squaring is really the only thing that we need to look at. Um, and uh, the formulas that uh, come out of this video are applicable to the monomials in the uh, unit interval. Uh, like whenever I talk about a real number, I'm talking about a real number implemented on a computer on a float. I'm saying I'm implementing the polynomials, but of course, you know, it's an arbitrary appro approximation to the polynomial and I'm t talking about floats in the interval zero to one. Okay, so uh, first off, some obvious formulas. So, you know, if you have the, the difference and the sum and you multiply that out, then you see this x squared, y squared, and the mixed terms exactly cancel. So if you want to compute uh, three times four, uh, in this case, because they are all uh, one apart from, from four, you can use this formula and compute um, the multiplication of three and four uh, in this way by squaring four, right? Okay, this is what I want to get at. I multiply by, by squaring. Um, and so um, to, like, this is a little bit special because the four is exactly in the middle of those, right? Um, we are, I'm deriving here a little bit more general formula uh, that goes in this direction, introducing um, an offset on both parts. And then you can do the calculation again and you get exactly this kind of thing. What's uh, uh, relevant here is that despite, you know, if you do x plus d and square it, you would get a d squared term. But because of like by construction, I ex um, exactly subtract two terms so that a d squared term does not uh, pop up here, right? 
this is going to be relevant for the construction a second did you see in a second um more generally um just you know just throw some um simple but maybe you know maybe you have a notebook and you want to note these things down there's also this formula which just emerges if you look at um, the uh, you know how to expand this um, uh, binomial object here okay uh, and also here right so this is uh, naively you would say oh d is at the order of n plus one but in the end result the highest order of d is is uh, d to the power of n and this is exactly what happens here right the power is 2 but there's only d in um, first power okay so given this formula we can plug in uh I'll, I'll leave this here given this formula i can plug in these numbers right i'm in, in interested in squaring um and i choose uh, wisely exactly the the three parameters x y and d but d is the uh, the mean of two two values, and what pops out is that I obtain this here. Um, this you know I, I, you know, I choose x equals zero, so uh, this minus y gets multiplied by something. I choose y as minus capital Y, so it's exactly y times and then then some object here. And uh, why do I do this? Because in this way I found a way to multiply two numbers x and y uh, even if i if what i have available is just uh, addition subtraction um division by two okay and um the um the squaring operation right i'm squaring and i'm, I'm uh, multiplying this these two numbers right so in a neural network um you can think of x and y as varying inputs and I can multiply um, along the network by uh, with the weights, but the weights are fixed. So if I want to have two parameters that I want to multiply, um, then I, I cannot encode the information about the input x and y in the weights. So um, nevertheless, this then tells me that to multiply two numbers together, I can do this by figuring out how to square, right? And so the task is, Okay, how do I implement a neural network where I can square numbers? And okay, so once we got uh, uh, how we multiply and we have how we square, then we can also get the higher monomials, right? Then we can say, oh, you know, uh, x to the n plus one is just x multiply, and then we choose this input x to n, the output of some other um, potents. Uh, operation and this way we get x to the power of n and then once we have all x to the power of n we have all polynomials um, and then we also have all uh, approximations to analytical functions right we just say oh we, we look at the Taylor expansion let's say of some analytical function and um, use uh, approximate this by polynomial for you know many enough terms and we're there okay so uh, this was just a comment. So um, this motivates to get all these functions, all the, uh, let's say, polynomials in the unit in the world. We really want to be able to square. But now the question is, um, like if we define, um, okay, let me now switch to the Python. Um, if here we, we define uh, this Redo function, which is really just the max function, right? So this is the... Um, I mean, you, you you might know this, but um, left to right, okay. If I go like this and then uh, start linearly, right? I'm zero, 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 and then at zero I, I go linearly. How can I use this to get the squaring function? How can I um, take enough of these ReLU activa activations and and linear um, combinations as I have them available in the uh, standard neural network architecture? and get get to a square function and this video is uh exactly about how do i get to the the square function and the like in short what what uh, what the answer is is that here these uh, these dotted lines are the squared function this curve is exactly um what is it uh like it's minus x squared and then shifted by a half uh and and with an offset to be here in the middle. So, you know, 
how I scale these functions, how high they go, doesn't really matter. It really um, what matters is the nonlinear behavior. But this is basically minus x squared, then you know, shift it a little bit. And so um, what we want is this function, how do we get from neural network inputs x here in the unit interval to these sort of outputs, how, how do we get there? And we will get there by using the, the, the relos to um, compute triangles, you know, this sort of pyramid shapes, and adding up enough of these triangles um, so that the result uh, looks like the um, this minus x squared or x squared function, right? And then we're there. And so um, it, there's then some analytical formulas that you can, you know, compute in calc one, basically. They tell you, ah, yeah, if you take this sort of uh, extremely um, non-differentiable functions and add them up and you choose your parameters correctly, then you get a nice x squared function, right? And if you tune it, like there are some parameters there. If you choose the parameters a little bit different, then you don't get this nice smooth function. You get the exact opposite. You get this uh, uh, uniformly continuous function which uh, is not differentiable anywhere, right? So, you, so if you tune the parameters just a little bit, then you get uh, fractals out of it. So this is uh, here, what you have here. So this is this function. I think it probably tells you some um, uh, some explainer. So here is a version of what we are going to do, right, for this uh, fractal curve. And we are going to choose parameters so that we get something ni nice out of it. There is um, uh, the, the the proof will probably be more explicit in the next video where I actually use um, the construct a neural network. Um, you can also find them in the book. In this video, I'm just explaining it to you in terms of an algorithm, and you will see that um, things check out. Okay. Yeah. So. I know I'm going a little bit slow, but uh, at least I think I have the th theory uh, concepts all covered now. Um, so let's step uh, through the code. Okay, I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of, um, of NumPy, mainly just so I can multiply arrays with numbers. There's not no big use, just a convenience. I'm using the plotting library, obviously. I'm having here an iteration function, right? So um, uh, you choose a function f, you choose a, a number of times you want to iterate and then an input and then you say, you know, I want to apply this function five times, f, 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 x, if I didn't forget an f here. Uh, so look at the code, it's trivial. Then there is this uh, Neumann series, right? I told you that um, this is like the uh, infinite geometric series, except you don't use just an, a value for x, you actually use an operator. I mean, this is just a Neumann series, basically in a Banach space or something like that. And if you uh, define multiplication by concatenation of functions, then you already have um, what I have implemented here, right? So obviously I, I, uh, I cannot um, in practice in the end do an infinite sum. I mean, I could do some some while loop and so on, but here I choose a maximum number and then I sum all the, the powers of this function. Um, I code this up in a way that what you what you want to pass here is the function already evaluated at a, at a position x and um, with a free parameter n which says how often the function was uh, applied to it. You will see in practice how this looks like, but this is just the sum over all the iterations of a given function and the, I um, uh, define a function here in terms of the free parameter. Uh, like the free parameter is the power basically of how often the function is applied. Okay, then you have the uh, relo implementation, nothing to say here, this is the most trivial function. Okay, and now um, begin some of the more uh, more interesting things. So. Um, the relo activation is zero till it's zero and then it's linear, right? And it should be clear that if you um, like flip around uh, in which dire direction um, the, the slope goes and if you turn around um, the, um, 
the like if, if you shift around the relu appropriately then you can do it in a way that you you get a triangle outfit right you you start out you ramp off and then at a certain point you say okay i know that the relu function goes on uh, ramping up forever but now i want actually go down again so what you do is you subtract another relu component um, which uh, goes down twice as sharply as the first one went up okay i hope the explanation made sense um basically um yeah okay i'm not, not going to uh, dwell on that too much i think you can you can read the code and, and see that it makes sense this will just give a triangle peak right it will start at actually i can i can plot it so um i will comment out um so this is the plotting code to which we will get uh in no time um I think this will work. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, part of the the script that we are going to write um, is, is this function. So, this is uh, the the triangle. You see here, it's there's a, a relo starting out here, right? This is the literally the, just the relo with um, the slope chosen in a way that it ends up exactly in the middle, right? All the scaling, like all the how high the functions go, are not really uh, important. I choose it in a way that everything stays in the in the um, zero to one, zero to one box, so that you can also then nicely concatenate and know everything is very regular. Um, and then here in the middle at one half, you just subtract a relo with slope two, and then this uh, this this second relo one will win out and give you the triangle. Okay, and now um, now you have to think a little bit. Um, namely, I, I will formulate the question and then immediately show you what the result is. What happens if you take this triangle function and um, concatenate it with the triangle function again. And right? what comes out? If you want, you can um, uh, you know uh, take a pen and paper and try to like pause the video and uh, figure it out. Uh, if you don't know what the result is, uh, um, and you know draw. What's relevant is that you know you choose an input x. Let's say here, the function will map it somewhere, and then. Depending on one, what the slope is, right? You have to look at the code. What the slopes I have chosen, what, what the slope is, you will end up at another point, and this other point will be the input for another um, call of the triangle function, right? And um, so, to not make the video too long, uh, I will just here show you um, what happens um, if I do two more iterations, right? So this is some value we will see later. This is just for plotting sake. So you get this. So this this is the first function that we just saw. If you apply uh, the, the this triangle uh, to it uh, again, right? If you um, do like if the triangle function is called t, if you do tt, then um, you get the the one with the two peaks, right? This is because um, as I just explained, right? So you the function is such that if you walk along, then you go up and up and up, and then at one point you go back. To get to lower values again, and so if you apply the thing twice, then you 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 you, uh, you go in one direction. Eventually, there's a point where you go back again, and then it's as if you move back on this on this slope, and so that's why you from one triangle you get two triangles. And you can you can think of it uh, by yourself. You have to take into account the exact slopes that are chosen, but this is how it works out. And then if you do it again. It multiplies again, the, the number of uh, peaks multiplies again, and suddenly you have four things, right? And by the way, um, the Wikipedia page for that, I did not link to, but um, I, I just might. Uh, this is called triangle wave. In this case, we are just looking at it in the unit interval, but uh, of course you can think of it as being periodically repeated, and then you get a sort of wave, you get a, like a, a repetition of this. and. 
Um, so th that's why once you have the first, there's also uh, like another way of computing this thing, not by these iterations, but by just scaling. Like once you have an, a periodic wave, you can also just scale the axis, right? And then you get the same effect of just getting more higher frequency of triangles. Okay. And so uh, now you can already guess um, in which direction this is going, namely um, what we are, like I will leave these tri three triangles on there, but what basically the code entails is we're just going to stack up these triangles on top of each other, right? We were going to add this one to this one, um, but um, e at each iteration we're going to uh, exponentially suppress how uh, its amplitude, like how far it goes up, and this this way we are adding less and less stuff, but nonetheless it gives more and more structure. And so if I do this um, with the first three ones, I think that's how I can do it. So, um, oops, I commented it out. Um, Yeah, so what happens if I, um, yeah, so, my le sorry. Um, let's choose, so you saw a lot of colors because there's a lot of denominators, like there's a lot of versions and um, this is a little bit confusing, that's why I'm removing all, but the, the two one, Right, so I'm only doing this addition for one. Um, I'm starting out with one thing. Okay, so this is the um, the the triangle, and then two like then the next two triangle like this one and the the follow up are added together here. Sorry, I have to blend this out very very nicely um should i okay I, I don't think i can simultaneously uh, plot all the reds and all the the, uh, the evolution but i mean you get the gist right so yeah so so uh, the first triangle then the iterated uh, triangle both added together give this sort of structure and hence, if I go even higher, um, and so, I think this should work out. Yeah, so then here you see, now I add even this, this as well, but with like, you know, a suppressed amplitude. And this is how this, this sort of structure here emerges, right? Let me remove the red lines again, but go up to seven iterations. So after uh, seven iterations with smaller and smaller amplitude added on top of it, this thing emerges, right? And this is then how, let's go to the maximum 20, how you get this sort of structure, right? And um, if, however, you choose another denominator, so I'm going with 1.4, uh, 1.5. So this is, a smaller number here I I, um, I scale down the amplitude a little bit less and so the overall result will be something more aggressive so a little bit bigger right because I don't scale down as much and uh, I get this sort of thing if I go in the other direction and do free uh, then I got this thing and it looks nice and then without proof if I choose a 4 in like a particular way of suppressing the amplitude that I added, I get this red line, and this happens to be just a perfect square, perfect monomial, and this is like what the code will do. Okay, so I, I spoiled you heavily now. This is just what we're going to imp uh, implement, and so once you have that, that means that um, you just need the relos to implement the triangle. Then you need to uh, feed the output of such relos to itself over and over and over again. So that you get more and more this this um, this uh, this zigzags, you add them up in a particular way, right? We don't need to do learning. I already know the weights. I already know the, already know how to suppress and add things together. And then we um, the output 
with precision of our choice, let's say we make like 50 iterations, will be something where there is this there's this curve, right? I, I can shift it back, I can flip it around, then I get the perfect square. And then I have the square. And once I have a square, as I've argued, um, as I've argued here, once I, I know how to square, I know how to, to multiply inputs as well, right? Because I can add these um, these uh, input values to another another network port, uh, add a weight one half, add them together, um, square it, and then I get monomials, and that's then then I'm done basically. Then I got the uh, the whole polynomial range. Okay, um, so let me just reconstruct the plots as I have had them. So here at the at the bottom of the script, I'm just um, plotting literally directly this this square function, right? And by the way, here is the um, here you see um, how this square relates to a proper square, like how you must offset things so that you get the, the proper square back. Um, and if I draw this, I get back to the original picture. So here I'm just plotting the perfect square, and this is a perfect fit with the with the graph. Okay. So the, the the order in which I presented things was not what I intended. I didn't intend to go into all this visual stuff, but I think maybe that's a better explanation than just looking at the code. So again, here again, here's this triangle. Um, I you, uh, implemented with a bunch of constants so that um, you see, like, get an idea how this will translate to a neural network. But in reality, what it says here is, I think, I think what it says is just two times max uh, zero x and then minus four max zero and then I think it's x minus one half, something like that, right? So I'm not sure about this, but this is basically just this, the triangle. Okay, um, then once I have the Neumann series that I've already implemented above, right, just the sum over the iterations, uh, then what we have here is an application of this iterated triangle divided by some a certain denominator, as I have uh, like shown you basically, four is the denominator where you get the nice curve out in the end. So every term is not just a function, it's actually the function divided by, uh, by four, Right, all the, the the higher up you are there in the in in the sum, the less worth con are the contributions. Uh, I take these sort of functions, I, I iterate them, I add them together, um, and in this way, um, I get this this bump. I had just have to subtract the linear term from that, right? Because um, this is this is not just x squared. That, that this bump is is like x times one minus x. And um, so I have to basically untangle uh, the linear part. And um, again, there's some sc scaling so that everything like uh, goes together. Um, the, you know, the, 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 it's not in the nature of this triangle plot to fit to some square. That's just how I abuse it basically here to get this quadratic function. But so I have to uh, add some scale factors and uh, so that everything checks out correctly. And then, if I run the script, which I have done now 20 times or so, um, every time it actually checks out, hey, is the square function, the analytical square, like just, you know, pi from x squared, actually the same result as you see here. And indeed, every time I executed it, it worked out. So this is how uh, you implement the, the, square, the squaring of x just by a lot of calls of the relo activation. Right, okay, and and that said, the rest is really trivial plotting code. So um, uh, here is just setting up the the picture. I use 500 grid points because you know if I if I just use 30, then it looked probably very messy. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go back to 300. Um, and then just a bunch of plotting utilities. The, the, I, I've coded it in a way that uh, I can choose the denominator. That's why I get all these plots, right? Um, I'm not reusing the uh, complicated square Neumann um, functions that I had above, uh, simply because if I do that, then I cannot access the different denominators. 
Um, but all of these uh, correspond to a, a different way of suppressing the amplitude of every new um, term. And that's what's happening here, right? I have a, a dictionary that uh, collects all the outputs. Um, and here I loop over both the semans and the uh, different uh, denominators and just collect this, this sort of data. So I'm able to plot it and the rest of the script is literally just plotting. Okay, so um, I think that's the end of the video. Um, as I said, uh, you can take this idea and lay out a neural network which does exactly this thing. This will be, but I can maybe, um, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we will get to it in the next video, but um, it's basically a network where you don't need more than width free. So you basically need, um, think of um, a uh, completely connected uh, graph as far as the layers are concerned, like layer to layer is um, completely connected. The width is only free and the longer you make the network, i.e. the deeper the network is, the more terms can you, you can pick up um, as in the same way that we saw in this analytical, analytical computation here. And the, the higher gets the precision, um, but that's it basically. Okay, so uh, with that said, uh, I wish you a nice su Sunday evening. <laughs>